it's been nearly four years now since I first met you on that one sandwich with that where you fought uh, Natalie Gonzalez Hills. Do you remember correctly? Yep. I uh, remember that. Oh my goodness, yeah. that was a long time ago, huh? I know, and, and it's even harder to believe uh, kind of how much you fit, you've fit. you already fit into your kind of 23 years now. Uh, I just can't get over uh, how, how much life you've put into your 23 years. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so for, for everyone watching who's, you know, so a lot of people are obviously going to uh, be following you already, but there's maybe quite a few people who ha don't know as much about you. If we take it back then, um, how, did, how did you get started in martial arts then? Um, so, hi everyone. Um, my name is Angela. And um, I got started in mixed martial arts. Um, I mean, just as the moment I was born, pretty much, because both of my parents, they grew up, um, you know, uh, training in mixed mar uh, in martial arts. And then eventually they opened their own gym. And then when they had a family, then, you know, me and my brother Christian, we were just like little toddlers on the mat, just chilling, watching mom and dad teach. And eventually, you know, uh, we started training as well and we just fell in love with it. And it's pretty much the story of my whole family. Well, I, I've had the absolute pleasure to have met your mom and dad and your brother. And I've spoken at length with mom and dad before now. Uh, and I know how great they are at martial arts. Well, are they who you would credit your your development in terms of martial arts and the reason that you transitioned from being a junior athlete into being an adult fighter because there's a lot of there's a lot of kids that drop out and never become adult athletes aren't they definitely you know um it's it's crazy because although we have many friends along the way um you know to to help us in certain areas the majority of the skills that we acquired over the years are all from mom and dad and um it's crazy because my dad especially he he just keeps learning and evolving and he um you know like it's trial and error and so like i was saying all all of the techniques and the skills that we learned were pretty much in-house and um we just kept evolving and learning and growing as, as a family and um yeah a lot of trial and error and uh seeing what works what doesn't work and as the mma scene keeps evolving we keep um evolving with it so was it tough then, um, obviously growing up, being such a close family with uh, mixing between training hard and, and being home family, mixing those roles? Definitely, it's something that I don't know if everyone, anyone is used to, but it's funny when I, in my amateur, not my amateur days, um, when I just made my professional debut and we we're in the back room warming up and, um, back then I was warming up with my mom, you know, we couldn't really find many training partners and my brother was getting too big. I still warm up with him, but, uh, we had my mom there and I was practicing back when it was allowed, um, soccer kicks and just placement. I wasn't, I wasn't hitting her in the head, but just placing it. And then, um, I think Chatri and Matt Hume, they walked by in the training room. They're like, is she kicking her mom in the head? Soccer kicking her mom? And it's just absurd um, for anyone else that's watching from a third party because they they just, that's so wrong. They're like, how can you do that to your mom? And, you know, she's amazing. Like, she is, she's such a good sport, and she does whatever she needs to do to be there for, for us. So I think, um, you know, it definitely is a, is a very unique relationship we have. So, you, you've got two younger siblings, haven't you? You've got two younger yeah. siblings. Are, are they, are they, uh, how are they getting on in martial arts then? So, uh, my two younger siblings, Victoria and Adrian. Victoria is 15 years old and Adrian is 13. And, um, you know, they also grew up uh, learning and training martial arts. And right now, they're just... They're just testing themselves, testing themselves in competition. They're, they recently, over the summer, flew to Europe for their first world competition, and they did extremely well, um, along with some other um, kids that we brought. And that was a cool thing, because 
you know, when I think back to when I first started out, that's really what caught my attention. When I was able to travel overseas and, and compete against other kids um, that are doing the same thing as me, it really opened my eyes and I had such a great time. The whole experience of it, not just the competition, but, you know, flying to a new place and um, seeing what it's like over there. So I think it was a really, a really great experience. I mean, for, for anyone, for any kid, um, but we'll see where they go from it. Uh, there's no pressure from me or Christian or mom and dad to become professional fighters as it is. I can't take it when they compete. It's, it's super hard on me. <laughs> um, I, I remember you always telling me that you found it hard to watch I found it harder to watch Christian than you did to, to fight yourself. Definitely. It's so nerve wracking because you have no control over the outcome. You know, you, you're trusting entirely in, in them and the skills that they've, um, you know, that they have. And then it's, it's, it's crazy. It's such a scary thing to see someone you love go through that. So I have a little taste of what my mom and dad go through, I guess. So, I mean, you you signed to one championship in the same year you made your successful amateur debut. How how did that happen? How did that come about? Uh, it's crazy to think back because it all just happened so fast. Um, I graduated high school in the year of 2014, and um, I wasn't 18 yet, actually, when I graduated. I had a, a couple more months until I turned 18, and that was important because in Hawaii, um, you cannot um, you cannot do amateur MMA unless you're 18. So I was just pretty much, you know, doing um, like kickboxing matches, grappling matches, um, some pancreation, but I wasn't able to fully use everything together yet. And I was so excited. I was so itching to make my amateur debut. And so shortly after my 18th birthday, um, I was able to finally get a taste of MMA. And once I did, I just loved it. And, um, I had three amateur fights here in Hawaii, pretty close together. And then, uh, my dad, actually, we started looking, you know, thinking about, um, professional organizations to contact, to, to reach out to. And he actually wanted me to have five amateur fights, but I only ended up having three. Um, and then he contacted Matt Hume, which is actually crazy because Matt and my dad, um, used to train together at AMC in Seattle, like years ago. And he says, Matt remembers me as like a little baby, like a one year old in a little baby carrier. My dad would go train with him. So it was insane how it all ties together. Um, now 20 or oh, 19 years later or 20 years later, he, he finally, um, sees footage of, of my fights and he's like, yeah, let's, let's, um, let's get her on board. Let's sign her to one. And uh, so it kind of just really all came together so nicely. And especially the fact that one championship is based in Singapore where my dad was born and raised, um, was an incredible thing as well. So I think everything was just pointing us in the right direction. And one championship was an amazing fit for for me and for my family yeah i mean talking about singapore it, it must it wasn't long after that then that you, you transit you moved to singapore to train out of evolve for a period of time um i mean that must have been a, that must have been a big move at such a young age coming from hawaii which is is by all accounts a very close community and a super close family Definitely. It was, um, it was a really tough transition. Uh, but that's how much I, I wanted to pursue this dream. And, um, I was willing to do whatever it took. Of course, many days I would be, I would be homesick and I would talk to my dad every single day and my mom, my family. Um, but I think those few years were really good for me, you know, to just grow as a person, um, learn independence, um, how to take care of myself. And, um, you know, it's also where I met my husband. So I think everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. Uh, you brought, brought us round to that. I mean, I know, obviously, um, you married Bruno um, last, last year, wasn't it now? Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you didn't go to Singapore with falling in love on your agenda. How did that happen? <laughs> 
Um, you know, just just um, when I was in Singapore, I was training hard every single day, twice a day, three times, and um, I was just focused on on training, getting to the top. And once I became champion, I was um, you know, still training to defend my belt, and just along the way, you know, um, uh, we were teammates, we were friends, and it it just turned into something more. And and I'm just so grateful for my time in Singapore and. And then now I, I took him back with me to Hawaii. So now we're living over here, and um, he's adjusted so well. He really loves it. I mean, it's hard to complain, though, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I wouldn't complain if it was in Hawaii right now. <laughs> we got to get you over here one day. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you've got a massive fan base in Singapore. I've got to say, like, people have been messaging me going, okay, I want to ask this to Angela. Um, so I'll, I'll throw a couple in now because they are quite Singapore relevant. Um, so one person's asked, uh, do you miss Singapore? Oh my gosh, it's crazy that, that you asked me this because last night I had crazy cravings um, for Singaporean food, for local food. And um, yeah, I definitely plan on going back to Singapore before the end of the year. So um, hopefully... Um, can meet some fans, you know, and definitely get some food. <laughs> and, and it's funny that you mentioned food because another person said, uh, what's your favorite Singapore food? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Let's ask her. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's, uh, there's way too many choices. I think uh, it really depends on what I'm craving at the moment. Um, right now, if I could dig into anything, it would probably be some fried kway teow noodles those ones are like my favorite they're like so tasty oh oh my gosh <laughs> oh yeah it's, it's always funny how, how food brings back memories as well isn't it kind of like food is like ah oh, i remember that because of eating that food Definitely. Oh, man. And and the desserts. Singapore is just a food heaven. Mm. I, I'm surprised I was able to stay in such great shape uh, while digging into all the amazing cuisine over there. So I, I miss it terribly. Um, so, I mean, I, I've obviously been following you one championship for a long time. And since you signed to one and obviously went to Singapore to join Evolve, you've been kind of like, one of the faces of one championship and evolve you know and and you really were a trailblazer at that point because the organization was still still young when you signed to it i mean it's grown exponentially now but um you wanted you're one of the faces of one did you feel pressure at that point with 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 that um no you know it's it's i think because of the fact that i was so young and well i'm still pretty young I guess but just the young mentality of everything is just amazing and 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 fun and I just enjoy it so much and this is what I've wanted to do for so long so I was really just enjoying every single part of it and I never really felt that heavy burden or pressure on my shoulders um so yeah i think it was a it's a great mindset to have i sometimes i wish i could go back to that 19 year old mindset where i had no worries and i was just doing what i love to do you know but it's hard there's a lot more at stake now there's a lot more on the line a lot more to think about yeah i mean obviously going from that you you obviously had lots of success when you signed to one and that led to um, the title fight with uh, uh, Mei Yamaguchi, uh, which you successfully won. Uh, I, I mean, that then became the, the youngest MMA world champion ever. I mean, how did you feel at that point when when that all happened? Oh, my goodness. Um, it's crazy. I just rewatched um that fight yesterday and uh, I just relived all of the emotions that went through it and I really I'm so proud of myself looking back at that fight because I, I I know how hard I worked for it and I know that was the dream that I was working for every single day and to see it finally all pay off was just incredible and I'm, I'm such an emotional 
person. Like, uh, seriously, it's so rare to see me not crying at one of my fights. But um, I was just overjoyed, you know. Um, but the hard work doesn't stop there. That was just the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I, I know firsthand that you get emotional after your fights. I remember uh, speaking to you after the fight when you won by a twister. Um, and uh, I, I remember the emotions then. And I can imagine that that's quite a common theme for you to, to let the emotions out. Because you, you've got you've to be quite emotional sometimes, haven't you? And I guess after you've had a fight, there's a bit of a release, isn't there? Definitely. It's such a buildup. And, and you think about it, you put yourself through hell for eight to 10 weeks um, of training, dieting, and it's just this incredible amount of buildup and um, to go out there and it's the best feeling, you know, to go out there and do what you train to do, to to do to the best of your ability, that's that's the best feeling. And that's why on the opposite hand also, um, when you train so hard and, you know, you put so much effort into it and it doesn't go your way and there's this huge letdown and wave of disappointment because you know what you're capable of and it just didn't show. So, I mean, it, it's definitely, I, I've tasted uh, both sides of that. Which actually uh, brings me to my uh, my next question, funny enough. Um, so obviously you'd had such a, a, a you know an unblemished record, um, and then obviously you challenged for the, the strawweight title, um, and then obviously the fight didn't go your way. How how do you look back on that fight now? Uh, it still has a, has a better taste in my mouth. I mean, um, my first professional loss, actually my first loss ever in my fighting career. And, um, I definitely was just, I don't even know. I was at a loss for words and I was, it just really left me in, in, in a, in a bad spot for a little while, you know, but with my family and their support, they didn't let me stay down there for too long. You know, they picked me up, shake me off. And, um, you know, now looking back on it, uh, I think, you know, I'm just trying to see that there was a reason for that. And I think that because of that loss, it has definitely allowed me to grow that much more as a mixed martial artist. And it's definitely opened up my eyes to, to train and work that much harder, you know, because it, it's hard when you're at the top, when you're, when you've never lost a fight, sometimes you don't have that will to push yourself that extra mile, you know, and you kind of just think you're doing it enough, but something like this comes and it shakes you up and it says, Hey, no, like there's people that, that are doing exactly what you're doing and they want it just as bad and you got to stay on top of it. So, um, I'm definitely, um, I've definitely learned a lot from that fight. So I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. I mean, I think you've, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. I mean, to some extent you're fighting most other fighters have had a, a longer amateur career where they've lost and they've learned from it and you're just, you're on such a bigger stage that people sometimes might forget how young you are. And obviously, I guess that loss, like you just explained, not only was it a learning experience, but I guess sometimes it, it takes the pressure off a little bit of yourself when you'd had that so much un, un, unbeaten. Um, and it allows you, I suppose, a, a bit of room to change things, you know, um, and, and, and learn and adapt and go forward. Definitely. You know, I've always known... Um that I need to keep working, that I need to keep improving. Um, but, you know, I think just the main thing about martial arts is that you, it, you have to be honest with yourself. You know, it's, it's the most important thing. And that shows most true when you lose. And, I mean, it's easy to just think, yeah, I got to keep improving, keep working hard when you're winning and everything's going well. But when it doesn't go your way, it you really have to take a step back and and evaluate everything and, and you just got to be honest with yourself and say like hey look i'm slacking here i need to do better in this i need to up this and right now i'm kind of at that point this fight camp was like the toughest fight of a fight camp of my life like 
really um, put my body through hell and and I wanted to feel that grind. And that's why, you know, um, actually I haven't fought at Adam weight at 115 in a, in a quite a bit since uh, May of last year. And it's such a push for me to get down to this weight. And that's why as much as I hate it, I know that I, I'm really confident when I step in the cage um, to defend my title because I know how hard <laughs> I work to get to here and I don't want it to be in vain. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's feeling this kind of confidence and being uncomfortable and being, um, where you don't like to be. So, uh, I mean, obviously after that fight, you had another tough fight with, um, Michelle Nicolini, uh, and again, that was a decision loss. Um, what, what did that, did that fight teach you anything different to the, to the one um, for the title? Because I know that was at straw weight as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that fight was, it was frustrating for me, you know? Um, I felt very, uh, like, just like, am I doing anything right? Like, am I, am I, what's wrong with me, you know? It kind of led me to question myself like that. And, um just frustrated, very, very frustrated. But um, actually one thing that that helped to get me out of this funk was um, helping to coach the the young team that we brought to Europe for the for the world in um, in the summertime, which was right after my fight and uh, traveling with them and and helping to coach them, train them for this huge event was really eye opening for me. It was very inspiring. Um just to see that like, hey, if these little thirteen year olds, fourteen year olds, fifteen year olds can go out there, be fearless, test themselves and, and believe in themselves and win, then why not me? I can do it too. You know, like and um I really needed that. I think that was the push, that was the inspiration to get me back on my feet and um to clear my head and 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 kind of just believe in myself again so obviously um there's uh, a, a rematch uh, on the horizon um how how you said before you were training hard what sort of things have you have you been doing this training camp what can we, what can we expect uh, in this next fight now then uh man, this training camp has been um, a lot of ups and downs, and, and it just really one thing I can take from it is just to keep pushing through, keep pushing through, keep grinding. And uh, I didn't really start off the great on a on a great note because I ended up like right in the beginning of camp slicing my hand open with a knife cutting up an avocado and I was like, oh great, this is like a setback for like a week, you know, or two. Um, but after that, you know, we really, uh, we pressed hard. Um, we got me in situations where I felt like very uncomfortable and I had to just work through it. Um, we've brought in multiple training partners from different disciplines, wrestlers, boxers, um, MMA, and, and we've just been mixing it up and, and covering every single area. And one thing that I'm very, very grateful for in this camp um, compared to the last camp was that I, I didn't have to worry about my back this camp. I mean, it's not a hundred percent, but it wasn't, it, ex, I wasn't in excruciating pain. Like I was, um, trying to train for our first matchup. So I was able to, to, you know, do a lot more techniques that I wouldn't be able to, like I was training for in March. Um, so I think this camp has been just amazing. And I actually, I'll be leaving Hawaii in about a week, um, flying to Japan early, and I feel like everything's really coming together nicely. So, I mean, I know that obviously you and you and Bruno have uh, a massive level of support globally, um, but I also remember after that fight, um, I actually saw a few, you know, um, comments online. I actually replied to a couple myself personally. Um, maybe kind of construe that um, Bruno's impacting on your ability to fight, that like you're not training hard. How would you respond to, to the people who say those things? Guys, I actually replied on your and Bruno's behalf on a couple of them, but 
obviously they're not so not it's never nice to deal with trolls uh how are you have you have you seen some of that how are you dealing with it thank you for that first of all um you know after those two losses um i think that you know it's so easy to talk from from an outside point of view when it's not you or or you know it's not personal for them you know um it, it's tough for me uh, it's always been really tough dealing with negative comments online and i've i've learned to deal with it better um but when you're already in such a, a negative mindset it really doesn't help when when there's things just added on um but what i tried to do was um instead of just focus all my energy on all the negative comments i just had to step back and realize look for every two negative comments there's like 10 positive ones and um i was very surprised and and overwhelmed with with messages um of support and encouragement because i mean the real fans out there the the real fighters they know they their heart is with me you know and um when i'm going through tough times um you know just a, a a positive comment or a nice message it really lifts me up and and that's why i actually did a video after my fight in july just thanking everyone for their support and how much it means to me because that's where i tried to direct my energy and my focus was on the 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 positive and was on all the love that was coming in so i was really surprised by that very grateful for it so what does the future look like angela what what's the plans for for the going forward um so obviously october 13th that's my next fight um that would be my uh fourth title defense um and yeah i'm just looking to end the year on on a positive note and doing my best so um i would love to meet anyone who's going to be in japan um also i'll probably be looking to to travel to singapore sometime before the end of the year and um yeah just you know one thing that i really want to get out to to people to the fans is that i love meeting my fans i really do and everyone is i don't know is this, this like intimidating intimidation factor but they say oh i'm so scared i'm so nervous but like i promise like i'm i'm a nice person and um i would just love to meet them and say hi because it's sometimes the people i don't even expect like i did this hot yoga class with this um auntie next to me and she was like oh you're the mma fighter and i was like oh yeah like no way you know me and um it's just so cool you know to be able to connect with people like that so um please please don't be shy I think it's probably because you've got such a, a mean fight pose. That's what it must be. <laughs> it's so funny. And then a lot of times they'll they'll look at me and they'll be like, "Wait, is that her? Like, you look different in person, you know? Like, yeah, it's maybe because you always see me with like this mean face, the fight face." <laughs> yeah, there's lots of comments at the bottom at the moment saying you have to visit them in different countries. You'll have to Brazil there. You'll have to do a global tour. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely um you know one thing that i love most about this job is being able to travel to all these different places oh i see greece brazil um and definitely it's so it's so rewarding um especially to meet the people over there and uh one thing that maybe i would be able to do later on when things uh aren't so busy is do seminars so that's something i'd um possibly you know definitely consider <laughs> So so someone's put stock for there that's like that's like the biggest uh like like out of all the places people put in Brazil stock for is is like it's sitting not far from me <laughs> I don't think you want to visit there above Brazil and uh, Greece <laughs> No I I'm not picky I, I I love traveling so definitely try and hit all of these places on my bucket list <laughs> Okay guys so for anyone watching before we finish up Vangel if you want to ask any questions at the bottom you can ask away I have a couple more to ask that people have sent me so I'm just going to pick up my list cuz I can't remember what else is questions um let's have a look uh, how, how would you describe your fighting style 
Um, my fighting style, I feel like um, I have a very aggressive fighting style. And I feel like I like to mix it up well, um, closing the distance, but, um, you know, ground and pound and submissions are, are where I like to, to end the fights. But I definitely always go for the finish. And uh, let's have a look. Would you follow any particular diet when you're leading up to fights? Um, or, <laughs> or after training or whatever? This is something that I need to work on is dieting off season because it's such a hard thing you know when you go through a fight camp and you are watching everything you intake you just have all these cravings that you want to check off your list after you're done your fight um so but it's hard because people say the best time to lose weight for a fight isn't during fight camp is is off season but it's hard for us fighters because one we never know when we're gonna fight and two um it's just so hard to restrict yourself. So um, I should, I should eat better off season, but I don't. Obviously, like I, I'm a big food lover, and pizza, pasta, burgers, sweets—they're my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, we get a bit more personal here. Do you have a, a pet name for Bruno? Um, <laughs> I I call him Hubs. Like H U B B Z, um, because I think hubby is a little bit, a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not my style. But yeah, just babe hubs. <laughs> uh, and uh, who would win out of you and Christian in a grappling match? You know, it was me for up to about fourteen, fifteen years, <laughs> and then once he got bigger. He was just too nice about it, too. Like, I could tell that he was, like, letting me win still because he's so sweet. Um, but he's just so big and just I can't even do anything. I feel, like, really, like, small compared to him now. And it's sad. Everyone thinks he's he's the older brother, too. And I have to say, like, hey, no, just because he has a beard, you know, and a mustache going on, like, I'm still older. <laughs> um, and what... What can you tell us about Bruno that we don't know? Um, I don't know. <laughs> he 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 likes to make corny jokes. Um, <laughs> um, but he loves like martial arts. He he always watches boxing matches, jujitsu matches. Like he's a true martial arts fan. I mean, his favorite movie series is like Rocky um and yeah I'm so excited um for his next fight too to be announced soon okay uh, that's good so what do, do you know uh where that will be or are you not sure yet um we are actually in the final stages of getting him his u.s green card which was so painful um so we just have the interview and he is good to go so actually right now for the past few months, he had to be stationed in the U.S. He couldn't leave. But before the end of the year, we are definitely hoping to get him on one of the fights cards. Ah, uh, fantastic. Um, okay, so one more then off this list that people sent me. Um, do you like binge watching Netflix? What, what's just, what series do you like watching? <laughs> you know what? Um, for the longest time, I never watched TV. I never watched TV. I could never find a good uh, series. And there's people talking about all these different ones. So uh, Bruno and I gave it a try. And we watched this um, a few seasons of Bad Blood um, on Netflix, um, Shooter. And now we just started watching Well, we did. But we took a break from what is it now? This this one about a bank robbery, like a bank heist or something. Money House, I think money something like that yeah, no, no, yeah but <laughs> anyways we, we don't really have much time to watch um tv but when we do i'm definitely one of those binge watchers that's like let's do the next episode the next episode and it's like 4 a.m <laughs> that's the only way to do it on netflix you gotta binge watch <laughs> yeah they catch you like that i mean you like it because it's shorter than a movie you know um it's easier to watch but then you end up watching like 
three or four and it's longer than a movie, so. <laughs> so what have you got planned for the rest of the day? Anything fun or is it uh, anything laborious? I am headed to a massage. Um, been training pretty hard, so I've got to take care of my body too. And um, yeah, that's a uh, massage and then back to training. Well, there's lots of comments at the bottom saying good luck on your next fight um, and obviously wishing you well and saying ignore the haters. Um, so I just want to say thank you for taking the time to speak to us all. Uh, have Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm guessing Instagram's a great way for people to keep following you, keep following your career. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for the for the love and the support. Um, I'm the most active on Instagram. So shoot me a message. Um, tag me in something and I'll try my best to get back to you guys. But just want to know that I really appreciate all the support. And I was I was really it was really fun chatting with you, Stuart. I can't wait to watch this fight. I was watching that first one. And I, I'm I, honestly, I cannot wait to watch this one. You know, I, I'm gutted that I'm not actually there because I was in Japan for an event not long ago. Um, but oh, okay. yeah, I'm not going to be in Japan for this one. I'm actually going. I fly to Amsterdam tomorrow morning. Um, I'm, I'm okay. Down, but yeah. Oh, no, I wish I was there. <laughs> for it. Uh, but I'll definitely be watching it uh, as it goes on. I'm sure you're going to smash it. I can't wait to watch it. Um, have. A fantastic rest of the time and the rest of your training camp. Say hello to everyone uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you so much. Cheers. Safe travels and hope to speak to you again soon. Pretty soon, Angela. All right. Bye-bye.